With this red spatula, I will show you how we can ideally create something in Blender that, as you can see, is bent. And what's interesting about this project is that we are dealing with, for example, the harder plastic core. And then we also deal with the overmolded part. And what are the best ways? Not necessarily how to build these parts, but for example, how to create them so you can interactively adjust shapes and forms. And then in Fusion, we will assemble everything to the final design. Okay, so, so before we get started, I would like to let you know that inside the resources, lectures, demo files in eating cooking utility, inside that folder you have all the images and also the quad ball which I'm using and also the spatula because those are the dimensions and profiles you should use. Before we get started, for those who missed actually last class, because I didn't show up, I would like to show you quickly how we can add the background images. So I went to background, resource master, resources, lectures, demo files, and there. And now I would like to use the spatula there. Okay, good. So there was a little, little trick I am employed. And the image is perfectly, or will always be perfectly centered to my world. So that makes sense that if I want to have a line that I can use to measure something to actually center this line on my image. Because now I can go ahead and say, make a square. The square should now be 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And now you can see actually how big my image is in relationship to the square. So now I have to scale the image till the 100 millimeter line is as wide as, for example, the rectangle. So here is the scale tool. I can scale it down. Zoom in a little bit more. Let me go into wireframe mode. And then by click and drag and then holding the shift key, you go in smaller steps. And then maybe I can zoom in a little bit more. So let's say 0.5. Okay, this was too big. So maybe 3, 4.5. Nope. Through maybe 8. Oh, we're getting close. What about 9? Let's say this is good. Okay. These images were also exported as 300 dpi and the image uh, the lines are I think one point so you see they're pretty pretty thick so if you want to have even better drawings we could actually export them as 0.1 or 0 0.01 stroke thickness then you have really nice and crisp lines okay I also have a black line that goes through the spatula in a horizontal line and I can now vertically move this one down till for example this lines up 0.75335 there it is perfect and this I will now lock to the top view. So when I press 1 to go into the side view, I don't see it. I can add an image, use the same, then copy exactly the same scale there. And now I just bring this one up, position it correctly, and then I will set this one to front and now with seven and one you see I switch to the different views and each time the image shows exactly the correct profile. I have both profiles in each image and you could for example for each image or view create a new image 
I simply found it sometimes easier to make one image with the different views on it and then I just move them up and down. Because if later I have to do an adjustment, let's say a profile change in Gravit or Illustrator, I only have to export and refresh one image and not multiple images. Okay, so that was everything about how to do the profile stuff. One last tip, you see you can zoom in easily in and out. We can also use a transparent image. Currently I used a JPEG with a white background. If we use a JPEG that for example works as well. Uh, sorry, in a PNG, because then we only have the line work. What can happen, however, if you zoom in a lot um, because of the transparency, sometimes the screen refresh starts to lag a little bit. Specifically, because with profiles, we want to work with bigger images, so a lot of pixels, and we zoom in a lot, we still see a somewhat crisp image instead of just big blocks because there is not enough resolution present. So it's up to you what you want to work with because of the refresh rate. However, most times I simply work uh, with JPEGs. Okay, so let's go back to here, turn everything on, and let's take a look at how I started. So on the different layers, I'm simply positioned all the different models or stages so you can see how step by step I progressed. Now the cross section is elliptical, kind of like not perfectly elliptical, um, so it changes a little bit, which is why I found that actually starting with a quad ball is actually very useful. So you see I imported the quad ball, which is also here inside the file, positioned it, scaled it. So I worked mainly at the beginning from the top view. Okay, and once everything was done, then I deleted this half and then started extruding everything out, kind of like you, kind of like try to block out the basic proportions till, for example, you start reaching something like this. Now this is all adjusted from the top view. So I, I nicely try to flow or match kind of like the flow of the surface. From the side, you see I actually also then worked on the handle a little bit and now this whole object is bent and it also gets smaller. So this is now where it becomes actually very interesting. And you see this is not a very dense mesh so only few loop cuts at strategically important positions is enough to create this type of a flow. And to make modeling very easy, I don't really want to model this bend. I actually, the flow of the bend, I want the software to generate for me. So when I turn off that bend, I get back to this flat result. So for example here, there you see now I have actually this flat part. And for the uh, to do this, I employ, as you can see, a very basic curve. So one point, next point, and then a third point. And only at the third point, I move this one handle down, this handle I move horizontally to create a nice curve. You can also see here's a separation line between the hard plastic and the visible overmolded part. And this point and this point, and they're all set to vector so they're horizontal and then after this horizontal part the curve starts to bend. Okay so there's one step I didn't mention yet. If you pay attention to you can see that to the tip it gets increasingly thinner thickness-wise along the z-axis. 
So when I go to here and turn this one off, there you can see now actually how this progressively gets smaller. So the way how I did this was I selected all these points at the tip. I turned on proportional editing and in this case I kept the fall off to linear because I want in a linear way everything to just get smaller. And then all I did was scale along the z-axis and you see you with the mouse wheel you can adjust where you want the influence to stop and I think I had it somewhere here so that right there where the material separates the overmolded part and the handle part would have the same thickness. So not too complicated and because we have this as a modifier I can always turn this one on and off. So the next step would now be to figure out how do I do actually this angle because this is polygon, we can't just trim it. But we can actually, if we want, for example, sculpt it. So I could go ahead and let's go to the tip. Let's turn this one off so you see the geometry. See with the quad ball, here let me actually delete this edge. There you see we have edge and edge, we can fill. So the way how probably I, I did this was simply U and U fill, U and U fill. Now I have a triangle, which is not good. So I will add a loop cut. This loop cut, let's turn this one off. I can actually move out. And now I have four edges, which I can fill easy peasy edge count. Okay, so that's basically the way how I did it. So now I, I capped it. And you can see that in addition, I also added another loop cut here to straighten that part. So I, I have more control over the edges. Okay, and then in this step here, you see I started playing around a little bit with uh, let's actually go to here. Let's see what did I do there. I think that is what I changed. Yeah. You see what changed is actually this area here. So this point and this point. You see there's no, there's no edge. And what I did was I select this one and then this one. So this one, the last and say W merge and at the last selected. U and U merge at the last selected. And then these two points, I moved further out. So they line up with this point. So why did I do this? Well, it's pretty simple. If you take a look at this, this is a nice fluid loop or like a U. And we also here have a nice U. So this means that later when sculpting everything, I get more predictable results. Okay, good. So this is what I created here. So how did I then actually add uh, or adjust everything so that it started to arc? Let me make a copy so I could show you. So this is now where you have to start trusting a little bit to your eye and having this profile image in the background really helps. So I can turn this one on and you don't necessarily want to move this one Oh, this one always stays on. Move this one to there and this one to there and then this one to there because it gets just wonky. However, what we can do is, let's say we turn this one off. Mm, let's actually position a plane there. 
R Y in 90 and then I rotate it there and let's move this one maybe maybe to there so it's a little bit further out and just want to show you what well I will do so I can rotate because rotate you see doesn't work very good however I can shear it so spacebar type in shear and then move your mouse wheel in my case to the left and there we have it okay and now I can move everything further back and there okay so however it's not really ideal yet and I might actually want to maintain this orientation so I could for example go to normal view there I have sampled this edge and then I go to transform plus there is my edge so this looks like normal view but it's not the normal element anymore and then I can for example move those up and down as needed so this one for example can go up a little bit this can go down a little bit okay and then a little bit more refinement so maybe this one here I move to there and this to there and then maybe everything back a little bit G and Y just to use global yeah okay so that was basically the the steps I did and you can also see that the crease so when I talk about crease I'm talking about this edge is right along the center but that's actually not the way where it is at the tip it's more at the back that's true but at the tip it's not so I can for example select all those and then move them down and then you can see in the 3d model how that edge actually starts to slide down if I want to be more precise I could even select all this so you 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 make sure I select exactly the same amount there and there and there okay S Z and zero good and I will move all at the same time perfect if I want to have a perfect flat bottom I even those I could say make all flat there you know you can see how the, the lower part is all flat and the top part uh, arcs the tip however is not really ideal so there for example we can move this maybe a little bit backwards and then you see from the side how I'm adjusting the tip area we're not really picking something up from the side so that's less important the front area is really what's important okay maybe because those actually went too much to the side then I can go back to the local orientation and pull these points backwards even it out nicely okay good yeah so bye bye uh, there's another one. Oh, this one okay that was basically now everything about how I started with a sphere started sculpting the basic shape then added the arc also started to uh, scale the tip together closed it and then reshaped it and then at the end adjusted this angle so now let's take a look at how I created all these different parts for the offset and for the plastic core and then how I fused it all together so this is now again where actually the cloning or the linking of objects comes in very very handy so let me turn all this off so you see that's the basic object and you see they all share the same 
not spoon, spatula, master mesh. Again, the beauty of Blender because it, unlike Fusion, allows you to have two, three objects access or share the same mesh. I can now generate all the different parts based on one mesh. And then via modifiers generate all the different shapes I need. And the advantage of this is when I adjust the mesh, all other objects will update. Unfortunately, in Fusion, that's not necessarily possible this way. This is actually not really necessarily possible in a lot of other programs. This is pretty unique to something like Blender or Maya, the way how they share the data, particularly mesh data. So let's take a look at our offset part. So there is this uh, clone. So you see, I this uses the same mesh data, but I call this one overmold. And I have, for example, a very basic cube. So this cube is lined up, as you can see, to the left across where the handle and the overmold part would split. And I modeled this cube with all faces looking to the outside right over the handle. Okay, because I basically now can say, show me everything that's inside this cube or show me everything that is outside this cube. So pretty perfect. So with this, I say split and I select the split cube difference. So I will actually cut the volume of the cube away from this model because this will actually be my overmolded part. But how do I create the center area? So the center area, which I have here, is the same clone. So again, it uses the same mesh data, but not at the end, but at the beginning, I have a displacement modifier with 0 0.002, so two millimeter shrinkage. I think, let's go in and turn this on. Yeah, nearly actually it turns into one millimeter. Yeah, millimeter. Okay, does this one have a scale? No, okay, good. So why this one at the top and not at the bottom? pay attention to maybe what's happening here. If I move this one up, you see how the geometry intersects. And that is because I have more refined mesh geometry, which then I want to shrink. This is more work. And particular in areas where it changes the direction, this is prone to more problems. So in our case, I simply do it this way. I move this one up so that I have this very basic metal model. I shrink this basic model and then I smooth it and then I bend it. Okay, good. And then I can, for example, cut the core out because I want the overmolded part not only to be completely over it, however, I want actually their holes so that the silicone also fills this area. So it, there is a better, I don't, know if, I don't want to say better grip, and there is actually later when we do this overmold, the overmold is flowing around these areas. So there's no gap or air that can actually over time emerge, maybe by heating, material expansion, etc. So that's the main reason for it. So how did I actually build this shape because you see it's nicely parallel to this area that's actually pretty simple so you see i have a surface here and then there i have this one so the way how i did this was i for example selected all these edges shift d move them up and e and z scaled them uh, extruded them down Okay, and then 
P to separate them. I have new objects. Okay, so here the spent curve I turn off, this boolean I turn off, the sub D I keep, and I have to adjust the the normals. So there you can see the some normals go into different directions. So control N, they're all facing to the outside. Perfect. And now I can go ahead and say point three. Actually, what about minus point zero one? Maybe two. Oh, maybe too much. Oh, maybe like we can just keep it there. Okay. Perfect. So the outside edge I create into a surface and then I shrank it. It's kind of like I'm offsetting it. Now I have a nice reference I can use. I will make sure that my 3D cursor along Y is at zero. Make a plane. Switch this to global there. Maybe bring this to there. Let's see where it is. Okay, height white is good. Turn maybe everything else off and subdivide. Add actually a subdivision surface modifier and then I can start pushing these points to maybe where I want them kind of like to be. This was actually not a smart idea, so let's take this one out first. There, we can turn this one on. Tuck, tuck. There, there, there. Now maybe we can add one here, one there, one there. Okay, now we can just sculpt this a little bit. Till, for example, this all nicely fits. This is actually too close, makes no sense. Bye bye. There. Maybe to the end, actually, it flares out more a little bit. So maybe this one here, we push to there. There we can make use of the red line as a horizontal line, scale it. Okay. Bring this one up there. Now keep in mind, this is something that's inside the body. So you will not really see it much. So we just should get close. Okay, so and then this GZ, E and Z, AA, control N, make everything look to the outside. And then the last thing I have to do is select all, nope, those loop cuts. And this one and this one. Shift E, one, enter. Whoa, <laughs> what happened there? And that's kind of hilarious. I must have by accident moved this one. Okay, not a big deal. Shoot. And edges A, whoa. Edges A, E. Oh, I got C. I press actually a Z and then I moved it. So, yeah, my fault. Okay, good. AA control N. There we are. So and then you can give this a name. I will move this on to a different layer so it's out of my view. But this is basically how I created this one. So core trim one. And maybe this one I will call core trim two. Okay. And there. Good. Same position. Goody. Let's go back. And then here, now we can say mm, core trim one, core trim two. And we can have different variations. Nice. So this is actually my over molded part, but currently it's still solid. But now I have the core, and that core I can now, via a Boolean difference, cut out. And there you can see, there's actually everything removed. 
well, you can really see the other part sitting in it, but yeah, you get the idea. So, and then when we go to the handle part, let's go back. So, there is the handle. Now, the handle is as big as the oval molded part, so it overlaps, not ideal. So, in this case, now here, I will say this one actually goes up. So, intersect split cube. So, this time I only want to maintain the mesh that is inside this cube. So this is the hard handle. And then in addition, I can say, you know what, also just add, please know the core model. Because the core model is smaller, you see, we have this nice offset effect. Perfect. And my offset surface will perfectly fit over it. And then at the end, we can simply trim everything out. Okay, so and that's basically in a nutshell how you can create an object in this case where we can easily shrink an object via the displacement modifier and then create the, the inner element so that in case we would make two different molds, no, we, we, we could then cast for example or inject plastic core and then goes to the next one and then we cast the over molded part over it. Good. So the next step, well the last one would then be how do we do all this actually in Fusion. So Fusion does not have a displacement modifier but inside the timeline we have for example the boolean modifiers in the form of either trim split or for example a solid combine and in fusion we also do not have a bend modifier so the bend command we really have to do in blender the offset command there is something similar to it which we could use and i will show you actually how we how we will use it i could offset uh, sorry i could from Blender actually export everything the displaced and the curved part or I could just only export the curved part. So let's actually use this one. So this is actually while it is a core I turned the the display place off so this has actually the original proportions everything else is off also the subsurface just the curve modifier is on so it's it's bent so let's export this one and let's call this one red spatula z is up y is forward apply modifier okay good so then here, let's make a T-spline, insert the mesh, red spatula, meters, okay, and then let's convert this one. Okay, so there we are. Now this is actually my handle. Perfect. And you see it's nicely, nicely bent. Finish form. Super. It's a very slim patch layout. One face, one face, one face, one face, and a cap face, and a cap face. Beautiful. Okay. So how do we do actually the core? Because you know how to do the shrinkage in Blender, but I would like to show you now how we can do the same actually here. So I will create another T-spline object and there is my initial mesh and I will uh, convert this one. So I will create a new T-spline object, okay. And this object now, I will give a thickness. And the trick is the thickness we can actually do with no edge. And then basically it will create 
a new surface that is bigger or smaller based on what direction you go. So, no edge, this object minus, minus one millimeter, let's say two, so it's bigger direction normal, uh, that's what we want. Okay, perfect. So let's actually call this one normal and this one we will call two millimeter offset. Finish form and now we will end up with this warning. Edges or faces may be crossing continue return. Could be we have to del mm. That one has an issue. Okay, so I actually renamed this one incorrect. That was the normal. Okay, so let's do this one more time. So thicken maybe yeah, just to be double sure. So this is actually good this happens because offsetting organic surfaces is really, really, really a tricky thing. And sometimes also T spline can have issues, which is why then quite often I do offsetting. Even when it's not very accurate, then I will do that actually in Blender and then bring that mesh back. So let's say maybe one millimeter. Just want to check the directions. Mm, minus. Okay, good. Okay, let's delete this one. That is the offset part. Yeah, okay, now this time it works. So now we have one millimeter. I wanna do one, one check, one millimeter. Let's do this one more time. And we make it one extra small. Yeah, okay, so then there. So it looks like with that two millimeter, that was too much, just one millimeter. Okay, good. Perfect. So now we have one called core and we have one called maybe, because it's not really over mold or so, let's say outside. Makes more sense in this case. Okay, let's take a look from the top. Yeah, so nicely one millimeter smaller. Okay, good. So in any, any case, you still cannot solve the problem of the uh, shrinking in, and then converting it. And then we could go to Blender, for example, displays two millimeter Okay, and let's make a new one, insert there, bring it in, meters correct, let's there, finish, outside, ah, it looks like they're actually nearly the same. Yeah, okay, good, good. Then even the size actually I offset in Blender was actually one millimeter, not two millimeters. Okay, good. So these features here I can delete because they're only in a mesh input. I don't need them later anymore because we convert them from polygon meshed into T-splines and then there's no link anymore. Okay, good. So that part is solved. Now, how do we do the rest? So I have this cube. This cube, for example, I can bring over, spatula. Okay, let's say maybe we call this one cube. And what I didn't show is, oh, I have to adjust quickly this nonsense here. Tick, tick. Then all this actually will work. And you see there's also a small hole. So I have a cylinder here, so this cylinder export 
tube and the I don't really need the modifier. Okay, good. Let's go back. So, because um, I want to see you now where is, for example, this cube. I can go to create a base feature. With the base feature, I can simply insert this mesh. Uh, there's the cube there meters perfect if I want I can actually go to modify mesh to B wrap uh, why doesn't it select uh, maybe mesh to B wrap maybe there's a new bug okay mm. let's keep it there for the moment it's not really that important so because th the main reason for the the cube was simply I know where in my previous part I had actually everything so I can I can make a sketch if I want to or I could use a construction plane but I think a, a sketch as a line is visually more more easy to read so uh, let's be nice and clean as there's my point on the mid part this one to there, dimension this one and there. Okay, so now everything is nicely dimensioned. 42 millimeters, let's see how this looks. 42.5, no, yeah, yeah, pretty close. Okay, good, perfect. So, uh, and this I now can dump because I don't really need it anymore. That was only for visual reference. And I have to get over my opening. So let's say which one do we pick? I will pick the bigger one. Okay. So export OBJ, no modifiers, Z, and let's say we call this one core trim. Good. And let's go to here another T-splines, insert the mesh, core trim, okay. And we might actually get a little bit of a complaint now. Oh yeah, yeah, because I have top faces. So how can I actually do this? So, Let's make a copy of this one because in Blender this works. In Fusion it should work, but currently it has a little bit of some cranky issues. So we can make a copy of this one, whoops, and simply delete all these faces. So we have just a nice open surface. This one we export. Core trim, okay. And Hold on, I want to delete this one first. Let's go back. And there it is. Meters, okay, convert there. Perfect. Okay, good. So this works. Now if you want, let's say, to be very, very precise, now we have with this import roughly an idea where stuff should be. But if I want to be more more accurate, I can actually do now the following. So I could go ahead and say, please make myself a sketch on the ground plane. Good. Then for the outside, please project everything onto. Does it actually project also? The outside edge. Yeah, I see. I did not want. Uh, you wanted to have this one selected, so let's uh, redo the step. Make a new sketch. Delete it. So P for project. Click on the object because now the whole object's outer uh, border will be uh, projected onto that sketch. There, perfect.
And now I could go ahead and say offset, so I press O, this one as much as I want. Let's say till there. Okay, good. And then I could draw a line, let's say here, I would like this to be vertical. And <laughs> maybe here a line, and I think we could maybe make this parallel. No, this looks like a line, but it's actually, as you can see, it's not really a line. So this one I might have to eyeball a little bit. So I can move this one to there. Let's say there. Perfect. Stop sketch. Good. Okay. So why did I do all this? Well, this one maybe we, we delete. I could have used it to split, but I will do actually it this way. So this is my core. And then I will go to create this one. I will extrude down and cut everything out of my core. But I know why you see I have sharp edges. So what I will do instead is extrude a, a cube out. Now I have a solid. Now I can actually go ahead and round these edges. For example, as I would like. Maybe five. Okay. And then combine U minus U cut there. Perfect. Okay, this works pretty good. So now we have the problem with, well, what do we do here? Well, this actually is my overmold and my plastic handle. So I have to split this body. So split body, U split by this line there. And we can call this one tip. And this one is, for example, handle and core. Okay. So now we can say combine handle with the core, join, keep the tool because I want the core to remain. And then go to the tip. And there we say combine tip no tip minus the core and it's out perfect so section view there let's take a look beautiful okay works super duper so the last thing maybe to do is a little bit of filleting no actually we have the hole so uh, maybe I go back to here so I have a sketch there you will see why in a second I will insert the tube meters Ah, uh, yeah, I had it actually mirrored and I turned all the mirror modifiers off, so that's fine. There, select everything, move this up. Okay, so I can make use of this T spline surface to cut now at the end everything out if I want to. We are a split. Uh, so maybe let's do this, or I could make a sketch with a circle and then extrude the hole out. Let's do it with the with T-spline the object, because then I can sculpt this element a little bit more. Splitting tool with this one, okay. And then U, and U remove, because we don't need them anymore. Okay. Fill it, U and U millimeter, maybe. No, it's a little bit big, but can keep it. And then here we make a very, very tiny fillet. So let's see what edges do we have. So this edge, 
0.25 and then hold the Apple key or control at this edge 0.25 and there we have a nice separation line beautiful and the reason because I maintained using the t-spline object is now because if you have a sketch and you make a circle well then you end up with a circle but if for example we decide to use the t-spline object this is something I was talking about at the Autodesk University we can basically sculpt our surfaces a lot more freer than a sketch actually allows us to because with, with a sketch we can dimension it but with the dimension and that ability also comes the problem of limitations being more stiff more controllable and it's kind of like a yin yang so and in this case you see if i wanted to open it and change the shape it was literally just pushing a few points and, and there we are there's our spatula with an over molded part exactly one millimeter so I hope that this basically again showed you kind of like where these two programs perfectly tie together. Blender is very good for a lot of quick organic exploration, but it doesn't have the timeline and the precision tool Fusion has specifically for trimming and filleting and all the stuff. However, Blender has everything for offsetting and bending, something Fusion does not have, which is also uh, something I mentioned at the Autodesk University in my talk. Don't think about these as programs. These are just tools. This is all an environment.